Hello everyone, welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about landing a mighty super étendard on the moving and pitching deck of the French aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle. And it looks something like this. Okay, trust me, it's not fake news. He's not overdoing. That is really the way we used to land on the pitching deck of the Charles de Gaulle. If you want to know why, stick around, subscribe, and let's get right into it. Check. Wait off. Secure. Gun blast. Clear. Right intake. Check. Left intake. Check. Detection seat is safe. Arm handle. Copy. I shall say. Boom. Calm. IFF. Up and up. Let's go. Let's go. Move it. EDI. MDCD. And ATP. Go flight. SCS. Sea level. Check. 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 Check a fully experienced and well-trained pilot. You take fully experienced and well-trained crew for the boat, about 2,000 people. You need experts to move the ship around, guys working on the engines, nuclear engines. You need guys working on the arresting cable. We have three of them. LSOs, landing signal officers, ATC, air traffic control. Chefs on board, because we're French, we need good food. Pastry, we have croissant on board the Charles de Gaulle. No croissant, no mission. I'm kidding, okay? I don't think it's true. I actually went to combat with without croissant. I used to eat eggs, just okay. Anyway. We are here to land that aircraft on that pitching deck. It is not a unique individual effort, it is teamwork. You have to have a stable platform. The boat has to move in a stable way. You left correct, but the boat has to be in a good position with the good weather, with the good airspace, all that stuff, and it doesn't happen automatically. It requires hours and hours of anticipation, of preparation, and a lot of work. The boat has to be ready, the pilots have to be ready, everybody does his job and it works perfectly. And try to aim for a landing at plus or minus two seconds every single time. Precision is extremely important and we say in the French Navy that a disciplined pilot is worth a gifted pilot. We have so many constraints that we need to be sure the pilot is going to be listening to the LSO, he's going to show up on time, he's going to do what he's supposed to do. Let's not move away from our objective. Our objective is to, is to understand the following video. How come we move the hand so much? What are we doing with our thumb? What are we doing with our left hand? Just why are we flying the aircraft that way? The reason is we're flying at 1.1 from VS. VS being stall speed. V for velocity, S for stall. If you're flying at 1.1 of VS, it means you're extremely close from stalling the aircraft. Your aircraft isn't behaving in a natural way. Most other aircraft, if you fly general aviation, if you're a Boeing 737 pilot, all that type of stuff, you usually fly around 1.3 VS. You have a 30% margin with your stalling speed. If you're flying with a stalling speed at 100 knots, you're flying your approach at 130 knots. You have tons of airspeed to play with, and if you're a bit too slow, it's okay. The aircraft characteristics aren't gonna change too much. You're on the good side of the curve, as we say. 
When you fly at 1.1, you're in a different state of flying and you're extremely close to stalling, so you need a specific way of handling the aircraft. What we do is we focus on the AOA, angle of attack. The reason the AOA is key in naval aviation is because of the hook. We have a hook on the back of the aircraft. We have a pilot with his eyes in the cockpit. To be able to catch the wires, you have to follow a signal. The signal is coming from the mirror, from the landing signal. Okay, so you have this mirror, you have those references, greens are the references, then you have a meatball, and what you need is to keep your meatball energized between center and one ball eye, that's basically what you want. If you do like this, you have a glide path in the air that is around four degrees, depending on a couple of factors, and you're gonna be able to know if you're on glide path, above glide path, if the ball is high, or below glide path, if the ball is low. If you're too low, You'll see a red ball, just go around, you're gonna kill yourself. Going a little high. Power, 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 power. So what you wanna do is make sure you're always on the good side of the force, cause this glide path is like an ILS. It's gonna tell you, you're, hey, I'm right on a good position when you're far away because it's only so precise. The closer you get, the more precise it becomes. When you're 15 seconds away from landing, being uh, on the center ball is about 15 meters in terms of altitude. When you arrive on touchdown, it's a couple centimeters. So you have to go on with the precision and to know exactly where you stand within those 15 meters, you wanna move the ball eye a little bit. The landing system is fitted for your aircraft. I mean, it, it is, Changing if you're a Hawkeye, it's not the same setting as if you're a Rafale, it's not the same setting as if you're a Super E. You have a special setting because you're the pilot looking at the mirror with your eyes and being a Super Etonna, it is X amount of centimeters above your hook. And what we want, putting the hook on the wire number two, meaning the pilot eyes have to be at a specific location. And now if you're flying like that, it doesn't work. If you're flying like this, it doesn't work because the distance between your eyes and the hook change. It all has been computed for a specific AOA, for a specific attitude of the aircraft. Therefore, you need to keep it. If you keep it, then all your landing systems are going to be able to help you. If you don't keep what you're supposed to keep, then it's not going to be able to help you and you're never going to be able to land on the boat. It's not going to work here anymore anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Other factor is your speed. If you're too fast, you have too much energy, and arriving in the wires might cause extra stress, bad for the aircraft, bad for the racing cables, bad for the boat, bad for everyone, might actually break. So we don't want that to happen. Therefore, you have to maintain a specific AOA, specific speed. How do you fly it as a pilot? There are basically two different ways to fly an approach with a super air coming on the boat. You have auto throttle, didn't work very well. With auto throttle, just like on the Rafale, you are supposed to do everything with the stick only. You're supposed to let the auto throttle handle your AOA. And as you're making a correction with the stick, pulling down a little bit, it's gonna make an automatic correction. So the throttle is gonna move back a little bit to enable you to automatically go back to your trimmed attitude. I'm not gonna be discussing it because it's not what we see in the video. In the video, what we see specifically is manual mode. You're flying the aircraft manually and you're taking care of the engine manually. At that point, your goal with the right hand, with the stick, is to maintain the AOA. The trim is helping you to be very precise. If you don't use the trim, you're gonna lose in precision, it's gonna to be tougher. So he's trimming to reduce the, th the stress on his hand. Doing like this is not as efficient as making very small trim corrections. That's why he's doing these trim corrections. He's overdoing it a little bit. Uh, from my personal opinion, he's on maybe 20% faster than what he, the norm is. So he's on the nervous side of the force. Usually people are less nervous of, at the control, but still extremely nervous. You're only at 20% of the regular pilot. As he's coming down, so with his right hand, he's maintaining the AOA. Now, how can you maintain the glide path? Because you want to maintain a glide path. So you want to maintain your eyes like that and you want to do that all the way down. So he's doing it with his left hand. He's doing it with the power. Oh, I'm slightly high. If I'm too high, I'm moving my power back a little bit. But by moving my power back, what is going to happen? I'm going to become too 
high in AOA. So powering back a little bit, moving the nose down a little bit to maintain the AOA. So that's one correction. Okay, so now my imagine my lead vector, my lead vector was like that, making one correction. Now my vector is like that. And now I want to go back to what I was before because I was high but on the good side of the force. Now I'm doing a correction. And now I have to do a counter correction to go back to what I want. So you're basically doing correction, counter correction, correction, counter correction the entire time. And you're doing hundreds of correction in a 12 to 18 seconds groove. So let's have a look at the video a little bit. The video starts by saying it's a carrier landing with a super attendard. And you see the boat. The boat is on the left. He's on downwind. He has his speed brakes out. He has... Uh, his gear down, hook is down, um, safety is down, so we're all good. Um, he just trimmed a little bit the ailerons. What he just did was aileron trimming. And he's starting to get on speed, so right now he's slightly fast. You can see the AOA indication, green means on speed, he's slightly fast. You see there is a, the arrow, the yellow arrow means you're slightly fast. And he's turning you can see uh, on the cockpit. Let's talk about the cockpit just for a second. Um, that is airspeed. That means he's in a turn. You see he's, he's turning at about 35 degrees right now. Speed brakes are out. Speed brakes are out to force you to have more power, reducing your spool up time and making the aircraft more responsive. Uh, so that means he's on speed and that means he's slightly fast on speed. So he's not too bad, but on a slightly fast side of the force. That's used. Um, for um, closer support missions, we could send information and stuff like that. That's his notes. Altitude right now is at 100, 200, 300, 400, 450 feet. So he should be approaching the beam point 90 degree of turn left. Um, what else can we see? That's to get rid of the canopy. And that's a GBU 49 system to set up your uh, GPS guided bombs. Um, right here, we have a couple of switches, radios, uh, emergency jettison uh, that's relating to chaff and flares, a combat system, all that stuff. And that's all the basic speed, altitude, engine instrument, only one engine on a super attendant, all pressure, all that stuff. What's of interest for you guys today is if you don't know exactly the attitude of the aircraft, that's uh, going to help you out to know exactly what we're doing. Okay, so now he's picking a little bit because he's at the 90 degrees. So he's asking himself, hey, uh, how should I turn? And what we're crossing right now, right here, is the wake of the ship. You are to cross the wake of the ship every single time because that's the boat and the carrier, it's a landing strip, if we can say so, is at eight degrees like this. So you're gonna have to go behind the wake of the ship, go on the other side to be able to finish your turn. Don't align yourself in DCS with the rear of the boat. And now we can see the boat. There you go. So we see the boat, we see the wake, and you see it's rolling out. As it's rolling out, what's going to happen? As I'm turning at 35 degrees, I do have a lot of extra drag created by my angle of turn. As I'm rolling out, what's going to happen? I'm going to have an excess in energy if I maintain my throttle at the same position. My throttle used to help me for maybe a four degree nose down situation, um, a four degree glide slope, and now I'm rolling out, so I'm going to have a lot of extra energy. So I'm going to have to throttle back quite a lot and then anticipate, because with an engine like this, you all, with a jet engine, you have to anticipate all the time and you'll have to go through the burble as well. So behind the boat, there is some sort of weird wake and depending on the wind condition that day and where the wind is coming from, it's gonna be bigger or tougher, but you have to be careful with that. Now it's very precise, why? Because it's flying the ball. The ball is much more precise than just hitting numbers as you're doing your final turn. He's on speed, maybe he's a bit low, slow. We can't tell, we don't see. That's the trim, so with the finger is trimming the aircraft, so moving the nose position. And now with his end, he's doing all the correction. He's maintaining this point of thrust. He's trying to feel the aircraft. And the way, reason you're doing that is it's much more responsive. And you're like, okay, I'm doing that all the time. I need a little bit more power. Boom, it's one burst of power. I need more, boom, boom, two bursts of power. And that is enough. You have the muscle memory to know exactly what it's gonna do. And 
I'm, I'm slightly low, boom, boom, and now it's enabling me to make the good corrections. It's a type of method to fly the aircraft and it actually works very well once you're used to it. We saw, we saw the red a little bit, so he's like now on the slightly slow side of the force. And now it's totally fast, you see how difficult it is. Now he's getting in the close, so he's getting very closer to the boat. You really have to focus on your alignment as well. So what's key is you have to be aligned, you have to be at the good um, AOA, and you have to be on glide path. Those three steps are critical and you have to go through them all the time. Am I aligned? Am I at the good AOA? Am I on a good slope? And if you're not aligned, there is no way you're going to close to the boat. If you're not on a good AOA, there is no way you're going to get in the close. If you're um, not on a good uh, glide path, um, same thing, you're never going to get close to the boat. So your pattern enables you to arrive in what we call a good window to enable you to work in a normal way, your way toward the boat. And you have like, just like for an airliner, you have the 1000 feet windows, the 500 feet window, LSOs have that sort of windows as well, except it's much faster and it's much closer to the boat. And if you're too way off, so you won't take a chance and you'll have to come again and give it another shot. What's interesting to note is you saw his power basically stopped uh, in the very close. Look again at his end. Did you see that? I'm going to play it again. Look at his left end. He's been moving it a lot. Couple more corrections. Scary, huh? So it looks like maybe, and that's just an assumption, maybe it was going on the slow or uh, on the low side of the force. And he had to apply a lot of power to correct. And with a super on that, you can be full power for a while sometimes, and it's not enough, and you still land short. So what is important to note is how much things can change in a very short period of time. So I'm just going to play it again. We're about to roll out, okay? So he's like doing okay, I'm coming, I'm starting to fly the ball, it's about 50 meter big. Um, and now as I'm getting closer, I'm getting more and more nervous, more and more agile, I have to make a lot of corrections, it's pretty difficult. Careful with the alignment, boat's moving away from me, and AOA is difficult, and now, now I'm getting close, I'm full power way before touchdown you have to have full power on touchdown every single time. So, what did we just see? We saw a super attendant landing at day on a boat. I did a video about the Rafale landing at night on the on Charles de Gaulle, in French only, so I have to do it in English. Email me if I forget. But what I want you to see are those different transitions. Even though in terms of timeline, it is extremely short. As naval aviator, we do transition from one step to the other extremely fast. And we sequence everything. And sequencing is the key to success and performance in naval aviation. When you're off for eight hour mission, you have to focus one step at a time. You still keep in sight, keep in mind where your end objectives are. We say lose sight, lose the fight. But you want to go step by step. And as you've seen, you have the downwind, you have the first 90 degrees of turn, second 90 degrees of turn, you have the rollout, you have the middle, and then you have the close. And as you're getting close, as you might see, it changes completely. And then you land, and now you have to use taxi, you have to shut the aircraft down, you have to do the paperwork, you have to debrief, you have to do your manager's job, all that stuff. Step by step works perfectly. That's how we landed the aircraft, by focusing at what he needed to focus on at the right time. It is easier said than done, but hey, I'm still there. Tons of fighter pilots made it, so <laughs> it works. Trust the method. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video about landing the Super E on the boat. If you're willing to share, put some comments. Comments help my channel by giving it more visibility. It's much appreciated. I do have a website, combatproven.org. I'm normally a keynote speaker. I do webinars, workshops. We use virtual reality, all that fun stuff. If you have any questions, send me an email. If there are some specific topics you would like me to discuss, shoot me an email, contact form on my website, combatproven.org. Have a nice weekend, guys.